Hey, it's Marty, The Meticulous Hack. This is a video I did a couple of years ago and never posted it. Um, obviously, I'm redoing the beginning of it on a better way of installing a recessed TV box. Now, it's, this has less to do with being meticulous than it does to do being actually practical and doing it the right way, okay? So, this is not the TV I use in the video I'm gonna cut to. Doesn't matter. There's a recessed box behind here on the wall, and there's one behind the console on the wall. And in between, no wires. Blue skies. This is what it would look like with wires. <clears throat> See, you don't want that. You'll have no friends. Now, this is a bit of a clickbait title, I admit, and it's kind of embarrassing, but to make up for that cheapness, I'll go ahead and give you the goods right off the bat. That way you can just leave if you want. In fact, 30% of people click away after 30 seconds anyway. So they're already gone, actually. I thought they'd never leave. So here's the thing. You're going to put your wall mount for your TV on a stud, and on each side of that stud, we're going to run the high voltage wires and the low voltage. So the stud is going to act as a natural insulator to those two. No EMF interference. Now, for a more thorough description and for other good stuff that you need to know, do this. Stick around, and if anything's too elementary for you, then there are chapters down below in the description. You can just advance forward. A um, little word of encouragement. It's an easy thing. It's not you know, one of those projects that I've described before where you have to rationalize the pain away. Like, you gotta go, oh, at least I'm not in a North Korean prison camp, you know? It's not one of those. And they're political re-education camps, what they're called. I don't wanna offend any prison guards. Oh, a lot of education going on there. They, they teach you things like, how to be in a room that's so short that you can't stand up in it and not long enough to lie down in. So think about that next time you have a flat tire in the rain. Anyway, this is not like that. So uh, I'm gonna switch to the video right now. This is a recessed TV box and this is not the kind I'm going to use but I wanted to show it to you for a reason. They all have one side where there's an AC outlet and this is the plate that goes over that. And these bristles hide the hole in the wall where the wires come out of it and directly into your TV. On the bottom part of the wall, behind your TV stand, there's another one of these where the wires come out of it and directly into the components. Now that's a good way of doing it because you have one continuous wire instead of connectors and couplings that could possibly, possibly diffuse the signal. I don't want to do it that way though because I don't want wires hanging out of the wall. In case I want to sell this place, I want it to be tidy. Now, I found this plate on eBay, and this has every kind of connection on it that your TV could need. I bought two of those, one for top and one bottom, and I ran an AC outlet, an additional AC outlet. I did. I'm not going to show you how to do that, though, uh, because there's an easier way to get electricity up to your TV. So, let's start from the beginning. This is the wall box I went with. Um, this is an Arlington product. I took the plastic off. Those, that was a couple of screws that fell out that uh, you don't even probably need. Um, but that's the, that's the uh, label for it on the back of it. There's the instructions. This is an Arlington model TV5, uh, let me see, TV as in TV set, BU as in BU and no one else, 505, TV BU 505. And uh, this is, um, this was $15, which is great because the prices of these things are crazy. I mean, $50, $60. I mean, this is 15 bucks and it comes with everything you would need. It's a regular two gang box, uh, not regular. I mean, it's for this particular purpose. It, it comes with a, a plate. Um, it comes with, let me see, here's the rim. And these uh, connectors uh, are, are in the, the Romex connectors are, are snapped in both the, um, these, are, these are a particular Arlington product that are kind of nifty, these Romex connectors. There's one in the top and one in the bottom for your electrical side. And um, so this is the, the bezel that goes around it, the wall plate. And these little ears, uh, these tightening screws, turn these little ears up against the back of the wall so that grips it up against the wall so it's not going anywhere. You got four of these. And I'm going to uh, make my outline here, put a level on it, and then 
I draw my outline with a pencil. In an effort to control drywall dust, because it will get everywhere if you let it, this is going to cause a mess. So I found a big plastic bag and I'm going to uh, catch the dust in this. It's wide enough to catch everything or most of it anyway. You don't want the dust getting into your air, your AC system, or you don't even want to have to vacuum it up because it ruins vacuums. Drywall dust, scourge of the earth. So anyway, this bag had vent holes in it for some reason, so I covered those up so the dust doesn't go through them. And I don't know, maybe a baby came in this because of the vent holes, you know. These are perfect size for your baby, by the way. But you know, they keep your babies really fresh but you, you have to uh, have vent holes in it if you do that. You know that, I don't have to tell you that. So anyway, I'm gonna put this up with uh, painter's tape. I'm going to drill a couple starter holes in two of the corners so that I can use my drywall saw from there. any kind of power uh, saw on that you're gonna have dust everywhere as it is all of the drywall dust got caught in this bag there's a very light powdering down below but um, I'm now going to show you the setup uh, that I have here and I'm going to show you I'm assuming that you don't want to add an AC outlet so let me show you a little diagram here. We start with the existing AC outlet. We have our TV mount on the stud and we have the hole for the TV outlet we just cut. Conventional wisdom says to cut a hole exactly like that directly underneath it. Any holes we cut will be level with our existing outlets on the bottom. Now in these boxes there will be one side for components for your TV, audio, HDMI, etc. and then an AC outlet for your TV. Underneath that is going to be this weird thing that is the opposite of an outlet. It has male ends on it, these prongs instead of female holes. It's called a bridge kit. Let's call it a bridge plug. It'll be wired the same as a normal receptacle and it only requires a simple extension cord. That will send the electricity from your AC outlet to the bridge plug and then up to your TV. Well, that's the way everybody does it and I say that's lazy. Let me show you a better way. If you run your AC and your low voltage down next to each other, your low voltage meaning your HDMI, your audio, and the TV components, you're going to get interference from the high voltage line, being your AC. Your piece of Romex is going to emit a, a, an EMF, it's an electromagnetic field or frequency. You run those uh, in parallel with each other more than a, a foot or two, and then you're, you're more than likely going to get some interference. So, I'm going to separate my AC and my low voltage on each side of the stud. So my low voltage will run straight down into a box that also has connectors on it. My AC is going to be fed from this other plug, uh, whether you're using the extension plug that you can use an extension cord with, or in my case, I'm going to add an AC outlet. It's going to be on the other side of this stud. So I'm going to come up the wall and into my TV box. That not only separates them by at least a foot, which is what you have to do, um, but it also puts a natural insulator in between them, which is gonna be the stud. Now I measured straight down from where the components will be, and uh, I remember putting the bottom of this box uh, exactly the same height as the bottom of the the AC boxes that are existing. So I make my mark. And I do the other side for the other AC, for the, um, let me see, this components here, AC over here. So I have my I have my height marked already and just get this level and
There you go, I've got my two boxes I'm going to uh, start cutting out. I just use this auger bit, which looks more like a sight gag than a tool, to go through the stud at the upper part of this box. That way, my hole is up here, and if I want to get a bigger TV and move this mount up six inches, I have plenty of room to do that. This is fish tape that's made for fishing wires through holes and uh, through conduit. I'm assuming you don't have that because you probably don't do a lot of electrical jobs. Um, I am going to, well, I thought that this piece of 14-2 Romex would go right down the hole and, and I could keep it curved so it would hover, you know, sort of right over my existing box here, or my new box that I put in that I added. I couldn't, it didn't work, I don't know. It just seems like it would. It was going through easily, I don't know where it went. I just couldn't grab it. So I had this homemade uh, remedy here with a string and a, a nut tied onto it. And I'm going to push that through my hole and give it a little push with the screwdriver. And that should fall right straight down. There it is, right here. Now I'm going to tie my Romex onto this end of the string because that way I can guide it through. I can pull on that end and guide it through this hole. If I tied it onto the other end, I'd never be able to get it through this hole in the stud. It, just from the other side. It would not using a piece of string anyway. So, so this way I can push it through the hole with my one hand and pull with the other down here. Here's the, the jacket with the paper and I'm just going to cut that off. Get that paper out of there. I hate paper in an electrical box. The string is through the loop of the wires that I made at the end of the wires, and uh, it's knotted. I'm now putting tape around it. And you put the tape all the way down to where the, the end of the wire is folded down, right? Because you made a loop. And you want to make sure you tape around that end of the wires in case you have to pull them back through those ends of the wires won't catch on anything. Uh, I'm going to take this little knot. All right, that should do it. There it is. tape off, open up the loop, have my wires, and I'm going to uh, go into these wires from the, uh, from the plug. This is my situation, okay? Uh, these go into the top of the, top of the box. You, um, knock out the, uh, the end of this tab, knock through it. Uh, I already did that. Pry it down a little. We're going to push our wires through it. See, you won't have existing wires in, in the box when you do it with that um, extension plug. Okay, I've got about an inch of Romex poke through the uh, poke through the box there um, doesn't you don't have to do an inch but this is a big long box uh, it's real deep so I'm just trying to get my wires to come out long enough to work with them I'm going to strip these wires 
You can do it with, you know, wire strippers if you want. We're gonna bend them to fit around the screws of the plug. Now, I've got different wiring here than what you'll have. I have to tie my, my uh, ground wires together. And so these, uh, these loops I made on the ends of these wires go around the screws. You got the, um, the hot side, which is the brass screws. Your black goes on there and the white has silver screws that your neutral goes onto and these um, these will go the loop goes clockwise the same way you're going to turn to tighten the screw okay in your case there's going to be no electricity running here that's going to be provided by the extension cord I've stripped my Romex back on this wire. It's going into the top connector of the, uh, of the box on the AC side. There, I've got about half an inch of Romex coming in through that connector. And I've got my hot wire, my neutral, and my ground connected and the additional screws that aren't being used I screw them all the way in and what I always do is go underneath these uh, these screws here at the top with uh, your, your electrical tape and make sure you get it under the under the bottom screw too so that your screws aren't bound by the tape you know and I'm I'm going around like this so that you pull one of these things out and you don't have to worry about accidentally touching anything I don't know it's just a habit you know some people do it some don't okay I've got my tape around it now another thing I'm doing is I'm I'm making my wires into a bendable uh, shape, sort of an S shape, so that, so that they kind of accordion back into the box. Here's the packet of uh, screws I discarded in the beginning when I was showing you the box. Um, these three inch screws would go, would go through the uh, side of the box. Actually, there's some, some little brackets up here that hold the screws. And that would be for uh, new construction. So we have an existing wall. That's why I'm using the little tightening ears on the back. In that packet came these four little um, number six screws that go, uh, in here to put the faceplate on this bezel. Now, this should have gone on first. That's why, you know, when I was tightening this, I was going, wow, there's no flange here to catch it so it can press against the, you know, the wall itself. Well, here's that flange. I have my AC receptacle on one side of that box. On the other side, as I said, I'm going to use this component connector. And these were I got these on eBay, they were kind of expenses, like 25 bucks a piece, I'm gonna have one on the bottom too. Um, if you have the wires coming through the wall that go just directly into your TV, then you'll probably also have that on the bottom as well. And if I were you, I would just get like at least 10 foot cords to do that with. That way, uh, probably more than that, maybe. I don't know what size they come in, 15 feet. You know, make sure they can reach all the things they need to reach uh, below when they come out of the wall to go into your components. And then also into your TV when you pull it out from the wall. So anyway, with this, I have two HDMIs. Uh, this is a uh, Toslink uh, audio, uh, optical audio. Um, this is an eighth inch if you have a, uh, a headphone jack on your, uh, on your TV. There's a RJ cable, uh, network cable, and there is a, a regular 
cable, uh, you know, a antenna cable, regular TV cable type thing. And here's the back of it. So my wires that I have will connect to the back. Um, I have all of these that I got from different places. These these two HDMI cords are from, uh, these are just Amazon cords. So I kind of went the cheap way, although all of these are CL3 rated. So that means that they're rated to be behind the wall. Uh, they're fire resistant. And um, CL, they're CL2 and CL3. I think the difference is how much wattage they carry. So these are all CL3s. They carry like 300 watts. Um, not that they really need to. There is my uh, network cable. Here's just a regular cable cable, you know, for the antenna. And here's my my optical audio. Remember to pull the little plastic nipple off of the end of your connector there. I have everything connected here. The uh, regular TV cable, the antenna cable, needs to be put on first uh, bef because you have to turn the whole cable. There's not a, enough room to work work it with your the little nut that go, that screws on. You can't work that with your fingers. Uh, you got to turn either the plug around it or you got to turn the, the cable. So once that's on, then the optical audio, of course, goes in one way because of the shape of the plug. They just, uh, I'll, I'll let you hear the little snap. Um, hear the little, little click and you know it's in right. Same with the eighth inch and so there you go. Maybe put a little electrical tape around the ends so they don't fray. Now, let's just drop them right down the wall. If your plate doesn't go on right like that, then I see that my plug needs to be moved over to the left a little bit. And it's always good to not completely tighten these screws on either one of them so that you give a little leeway there. And you can have a, you know, it uh, just barely loose so that you can, you know, adjust it when you need to. I took the uh, quarter of the box off the back. So I hacksawed it and then I took a razor and I skimmed the uh, edges to take the burrs off. So I could have taken the whole ha uh, back side of the box off really. There are no codes for these low voltage wires as far as you know the box. It could be just a hole coming out of the wall for that matter. So um, anyway, that's gonna give me enough room. Uh, I need the box. I you know, have to have it for the module and the wall plate and all that. So let's see, uh, this, will, this should work out fine. So here's how this worked out. Um, if I had it to do over, I would take the whole half of the box off of the back, the whole, you know, the whole thing. Um, you gotta bend the wires to come out of this opening. So anyway, regrets, I've had a few. I'm gonna push these back in here. This gap between the plate and the wall is there to stay. I've pushed, I've screwed it back as far as it'll go. You think for 25 bucks that module would trim up better than that? This will be behind furniture, but the clean look I was going for is kind of out the window. And there you go, it looks good. Hey, I even opened the blinds for this occasion. I've got the sunlight coming in through the dark overcast clouds and the new fresh sounds of the freeway next to my window, which is, you know, different every day. I've got one, two, three, four new outlets here, which is, you're gonna have three because of that weird reverse thing that's gonna be fed with an extension cord from your AC outlet to that, and that supplies power to your TV box and that's on one side of the stud, your low voltage on the other, which is a beautiful system. I haven't seen it done that way. I think it's the best way to do it. 
Um, the only thing that you could run into that I didn't, I, I can't believe I didn't, but a fire block, which is a piece of wood that goes between, uh, that horizontally between your studs, so then you can't drop wires down so easily, you'll have to look up a video on how to deal with a fire block. It's not that big a deal. This is real doable, it's easy, and I'll show you the finished product. I think it looks really pretty good. And the only thing that bothers me, I'll admit, more than it should, is that wall plate that won't go quite against the wall. But, you know, hey, I can deal with that, that's fine. It's gonna be behind furniture, and like I said, I'm not in a North Korean prison camp, and you know what, neither are you. It's a good day, so, you know, I've got other videos, subscribe, and have a good day outside of the gulag.